You've heard of the term muhaddatha before? Right. Muhaddatha, a muhaddith is a, a, someone who narrates tradition, narrates hadith. Right. A had, if, you, if you take a hadith and you, you tell it to people, you're a muhaddith. A muhaddath or muhaddatha is someone who is spoken to by angels. It's one of the titles of Fatima al-Zahra, alayhi salam. Like she, um, she, after the Prophet's death especially, um, there, there, there are instances where, she, where Gabriel would come and, and talk to her. And he actually narrated for her a whole, a whole book that we know as Mus'ab Khafir. Um, so she, because she was spoken to by angels, and she could hear them, she's known as Muhaddatha. So Maryam salam, according to these verses, is also Muhaddatha. She, she was spoken to by angels. Right, so to, be, to hear angels and be spoken to by angels isn't only for prophets. Right, even non-prophets, even women, right, women who are outstanding like this, they can also rise to the spiritual level where they're able to communicate with the angels and, and hear from them. Not only does she talk, to, talk with them, she actually sees the angel. It appears before her as a man. Right? The angels don't necessarily, they don't always have the form of a human being. They have, maybe they don't have any form at all. We're not, we're not sure exactly what they look like. Um, but they're able to, to make themselves appear as a human being for us. قَالَتْ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ مِنْكَ إِنْ كُنْتَ تَقِيًّا So her response is, she exclaimed, I seek protection with the All-Beneficent from you. So stay away from me if you truly fear God. Whatever I've written in brackets, those are, those are kind of um, what I've read between the lines. Right? Things that you have to infer, without which the, the sentence may not make, make sense. They're, they're sometimes... Even in English, in, in any language, you have things that are implied. Right? So we don't always say every word that we mean. A lot of things that we just understand from the context, from, from habit. Right? I don't have to say every single word for you to understand my entire uh, idea or entire thought. The same thing happens in Arabic as well, in the Qur'an. So sometimes things are intended, but they're not said explicitly. And the Qur'an is relying on our knowledge of Arabic to be able to fill in the blanks um, and, 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 and figure out what's, what's being said. Right? So that's what I've, I've inserted in brackets. So literally what the verse says is, I seek protection with the All-Beneficent if you are tr truly fearful of God. Right? As it stands, it doesn't, make, it doesn't seem to make any sense. I seek protection if you're Muttaqi. If you're not Muttaqi, I'm not going to seek protection from God. That doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. So there has to be something else that she's implying. I seek protection from God, period. It's not contingent upon whether you are, have taqwa or not. I, I, regardless, I'm scared, and when I'm scared, I seek protection with my Lord, who has the power to protect me. Period. Right? But then she says, so stay away from me. Right? Be on your guard. Here it's, um, the reason she says, if you are fearful of God, if you truly fear God, it's almost like she's, um, she's, she's hoping, she's, re she's reaching for this, this um, one light of hope, that hopefully this person even believes in God. But she doesn't know. She doesn't know who this, who this person is. She sees a good-looking man right, come into her quarters. Right? She's also a, a young, young girl and probably good-looking as well. And she's, she's fearful. She's never had that sort of contact with a, with a man besides her uncle, who was, a, who was the only man she was in, in contact with. So she's um, honestly scared. And um, her, her immediate response is to, to kind of grab hold of Allah right, by praying to Him and asking Him for protection. But it's almost as though she's saying... Um, if you are, if you are, God fearing as you claim to be, or as every good person is, then you better stay away from me. Okay, that's why she, she makes this contingent upon um, on, on whether he's fearful of God or not. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا رَسُولُ رَبِّكِ لِأَهْبَ لَكِ غُلَامًا He replies. He says, "I am but a messenger from your Lord." whom he has sent, that I may give you a pure son. Okay. So he says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not what you think. I'm not, don't be scared. There's no reason to be scared. I'm a messenger from, from the same Lord wh whose protection you're seeking. Right? I'm his messenger. And my mis mission to you is to, to give you news of a pure son. قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسي بشر ولم أكو بغيا she said, how can I possibly have a child since no man has touched me in wedlock and I've never been unchaste? Right, so she doesn't understand how this could possibly happen. Um, and, and 
she, she asks, she wants an explanation. Like, how can this possibly happen? Like, tell me something that'll, that'll convince me and kind of make me feel at ease that this is really going to happen. Okay. I think the order of the the order of the verse has gotten a little bit mixed up. So the next verse that um, the answer that the angel gives is that he says, "Kadaliki qala kadaliki qala Rabbuk, huwa alayya hayyan, wa li najalahu ayatan lil nasi wa rahmatan minna, wa kana amram maqdiya." Yarhamakallah. Right, so the, unfortunately, I, I messed up on the the PowerPoint. I'll, I'll just read you the verses. So the response that the angel gives, he says, nonetheless, the matter is as I have said. Right? Regardless of whether you've never, t- no man has ever touched you, whether in wedlock or otherwise, right? in any case, it's going to happen. Your Lord says such a thing is easy for me. We shall do this for various reasons and so that we may make it a sign for humankind to know our power and as a source of mercy from us that they may know their prophet and be guided by him. It is a matter already decided. Here, one of the things that um, one of the things that the verse tells us is that uh, this this miraculous birth, the immaculate conception of Jesus, and then his birth from a virgin. Right? One of the reasons why Allah chose to have him born like this. He, I mean, there's no there's no reason why he had to be born like this. I mean, why couldn't he just be born normally and still be an outstanding person? The verse says that he Allah chose to do this to have him born miraculously, only to a mother and no father, as a sign. Right, to be an ayah. Ayah it doesn't, necessarily, it doesn't only refer to the verses of the Qur'an. Like signs of Allah can sometimes be the written signs in His books. They can also be signs all you know, around us. Right, they're, they're natural signs and they're written signs. A sign is anything that points you in the direction of something. So the, the natural, natural phenomena, for instance, they're signs of God's you know, power, for instance. Signs of His, of his um, precise knowledge, His wisdom the wisdom that he has behind creating these sorts of things. So this creation as well is a sign of something. It's our job to try to figure out what it's a sign of. It's a sign of God's power. He wants to show, remind people that he can do anything. Not to take him for granted. What's amazing about us as human beings is that we, we so often forget things that are obvious. In reality, all of creation is a sign that should constantly point us towards God. Every phenomenon you can put a finger on, if only we would take notice of it, and think about it, think about how things work, how things start up, what, what makes things go, what place each of these phenomena play, what role it 